Hello, everyone. Welcome to Peter Peer Real Estate Show. I'm your host, William Morales. On today's show, I have Matthew Boltzell. Did I get Perfect close? <laughs> Close, you you nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Matt is the former host of Real Estate Journeys. They did over 100 episodes, a top 400 business podcast, and is a real estate investor with a portfolio of 743 units and four years of asset management experience. With vast experience in uh, podcasting and real estate, he founded Elite Podcast Bookings, a company that specializes in helping real estate investors attract more capital and become thought leaders. Matthew, thank you so much for being on Peter Peer Real Estate Show. How are you? William, I'm happy. It's a pleasure to be here as always. And uh, thanks again for having me. No, no, it's my pleasure. So um, Matt, early on, did you know that you wanted to be a business owner? Was this something that you grew up with? Did it fall into your lap? Did you know you were going to be the next Warren Buffett of podcasters, <laughs> uh, of, of, yeah. of uh, you know, private money, raising money? <laughs> um, let's see. I always, I guess I would say I always had kind of like the entrepreneur spirit. Um, you know, I, I did like the whole route. Me and my friend had a lawn mowing business growing up. Um, we used to have like, I used to create a club in the back of my yard. We used to have this big like blue spruce and we, I started like an admissions. So we had fees and then we would take the fees and like go buy uh, food. And I was always like wheeling a deal to try to do like money stuff. So I guess I always uh, kind of had just, just had that entrepreneurial spirit. And then, you know, elite podcast bo bookings just through the evolution of culmination of my life experiences uh, and podcasting led me and real estate led me to creating the company. So uh, I didn't intend to kind of set out to go that path, but it just kind of right. came to fruition. Yeah. So when, at, at what, so when did you realize that you were going to be unemployable? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, actually, I didn't actually recently uh, realize this until I, uh, maybe like six months ago when I was reading Alex Hormozzi's book. And he was saying something about being unemployable. He's like, he was, he had like an aha moment. He's like, you know what? I realized like I was unemployable at a certain point in my life. And then I was kind of looking at, and I'm like, you know what? I do a lot better when I work on like my own projects as opposed to like other stuff. And I'm like, am I unemployable? I'm like, is that bad to say? Like, am I unemployable? <laughs> so maybe, what, maybe once I started reading that book, I, 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 I maybe came to the full realization that that's, that's when I was unemployable. No, that sounds good. We'll definitely get to that book a little later in the show. So, you know, it's funny. I, I had heard a quote by Jim Rohn, who's what, you know, Tony Robbins learned uh, uh, yeah, under him. Sure. And he, when he said, he said that he he's working full-time on his job, but part-time on his fortune. And I mm. love that. Hopefully I got the quote right. You know, hopefully I didn't butcher it, but you know, it seems like that you were doing the same in a way because you were working on your fortune, your profits, you know, as, as he says, Jim Rohn, profits are better than wages. Um, mm. So getting into uh, raising money with podcasting, when did you start investing in real estate? What year was that? Can you recall like your first yeah, deal? Yeah. How did it go? Yeah. So I originally got involved uh, in real estate back in like 2000, like before 2008, right? Mm -hmm. um, I helped my mom manage 10 single family homes. Uh, basically I was, you know, running up, grabbing flyers, you know, doing demos, painting, like basically everything, right? Yeah. And I didn't really, didn't, you know, understand the finance side of it too much. Uh, and like most people that were kind of involved in real estate at that moment, my mom was over leveraged, how to liquidate a lot of her properties. Mm. And, you know, that was that uh fast forward to 2016 uh i basically left the united states to go attempted to travel the world failed attempt to move to germany moved to thailand fell in love got married had a kid but while i was abroad what i wanted to do was get involved in multifamily. so one of the things that i did was i got on bigger pockets created a digital meetup group had about eight people that were involved in my group and one person was on the sidelines and they were watching uh, just my progress. And they said, Hey, I like what you're doing. And so they put me in contact with a private equity uh, company that was starting up from basically ground zero. I was employee mm -hmm. number two and started basically working with them. I was working for them for free, doing one thing after another, 
underwriting deals, helping with marketing, et cetera. And then after a while, I was like, hey, let's put you on the website. Now we start getting properties. Now I'm starting getting GP shares. And after four years, um, you know, I was able to build up a portfolio of 700 plus units. And that's how I got my foot into the multifamily space. Mm -hmm. During that time, I, you know, had a podcast. My podcast was called Real Estate Journeys, had 114 episodes. And I was going on other people's podcasts. I was being pitched to people on my podcast. And I just kind of saw that the whole industry was kind of broken and thought I can do a better uh, business model. And then that's when I created Elite Podcast Bookings, which basically specializes in helping real estate investors get on an elite, uh, elite podcast and basically helps them with attracting more deal flow capital, et cetera. Yeah, no, we'll definitely get to that too. Um, so getting back to real estate, can you talk yep. about your early mistakes that you made in real estate and how did you learn from it? Because, you know, um, we always hear the, always the plus side of real estate investing is always the great journeys and all that, but we all yeah. struggle. I know I have and all that. So any, and I hate to say, the, I hate to use the word failure because to me, that's mm. like a final. I, that's how I look at it. I like mistakes mm. because you can always correct them. So sorry for the long time, <laughs> but can you talk <laughs> about your, your early mistakes that you made in real estate and how did you correct them? Yeah. And would, we'll get into say, elite uh, podcast bookings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would just say for as far as like, you know, the early mistakes uh, or just with anything in general, it would be kind of like not necessarily understanding the numbers and mm. then thinking that everything is going to go up forever, right? Especially like in today, a lot of people are starting to get caught a little bit with their pants down, right? Not necessarily understanding numbers and just thinking that, hey, you know, leverage, 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 acquire, 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 acquire. And then the first big contraction that you have, you know, that's when, you know, the stress test actually comes into play. Right. Yeah. And so not necessarily being able to understand the numbers uh, earlier. Right. I was just kind of like more in, working in it and helping my mom, and, you know, but if I think my mom understood the numbers better, or if I was able to understand the financials better, you know, helping her with the deals, uh, I think everybody would have been a lot better uh, moving forward. So then from, from that point on, did you start learning about the numbers and all that? Did you? Or yeah, yeah. No, I, I definitely, um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely had a stronger grasp for it. Yeah. Right. I mean, you kind of have to, right. I mean, it's like pretty much, yeah, you don't yeah, really right. know the parameters per se. Right. Like if you didn't know a hundred degrees is hot as hell, right. <laughs> you, you don't know. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> or you're just like, I've never been in hundred degree weather. Like, I don't even know what that feels like. So you're like, okay, like this is, this is what it feels like to have a, this amount of leverage. Like this is, this is how you kind of underwrite some deals. Like, okay, this is, this makes sense. Like this is more so for the lender. Okay. All right. Got it. Um, but yeah, I, I would definitely say, you know, once you, once you understand the numbers more, so everything moving forward is easier to understand and you kind of know, you know, what you're comfortable with. And would you say that, you know, obviously the, the obvious question or not even the obvious, but I'm pretty sure I'll get the obvious answer. Uh, did that make you a better investor going forward once you got to know the numbers, once you got to know what, uh, what percentage the lender gets, what percentage you get or, and your team, did that made you a better investor? Like, did you know from that? Yeah, I, 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 I got think, it, I got the grasp. Yeah, I think like kind of like, you know, you touched on a little bit that, you know, when you... Uh, and let's say you have a failure, right? Hopefully mm -hmm. you learn from your failure. And when you have failures or you have more experiences, you generally have more confidence moving forward, right? Your, your True. calm seas never made for a good sailor, right? So mm -hmm. now that you're, we're in 2022, right? So people that have been invested for real estate longer, people are more likely to you know, develop that trust and be more likely to invest with you. You're more likely to attract more deals. You're more likely to purchase more real estate. You feel more confident somebody that's just coming into the market now uh, who's never under in a deal or never uh, doesn't know the numbers is, you know, they don't feel as confident going and purchasing their first property as opposed to somebody that's been doing it for like 15, 20 years. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. It's all about the numbers. We talk with Matthew Bosell here. Uh, our main topic is raising money with podcasting, which we'll, we'll definitely get into. So, um, 
What was that aha moment when you decided to form Elite Podcast Bookers? What, what, when did you wake up and you say, hey, this is what I need to do and to help, like you said, other investors, other podcasters? Yeah. What was that moment? Yeah, so I would say, um, you know, when I was when I had the podcast, or sorry, when I, yeah, when I had my podcast, Real Estate Journeys, like I said, a lot of people were getting, being pitched to me. And I, I was going on a lot of podcasts and I was right. kind of just thinking like, listen, these people that are reaching out to me, they don't know anything about real estate. You know, they're, you know, they don't know anything about raising capital. They just, they're just kind of like, they're just have a general premise of the business model. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking like, well, I kind of understand this because I'm in podcasting and I have a real estate background. So there was an overlap and I was like, I think I could do this a lot better. So what I did is I, like I said, I just kind of created a, I created a minimum, minimum viable product, right? And I, I had my email list and I created a website, a one-page website, and I sent out emails and I was like, all right, let's just see what happens here. And from the emails, I was able to get two or three clients. And then all of a sudden I was like, okay, I had proof of concept. And I was like, okay, like now I have a business. And I scrambled to start a business like that, yeah. <laughs> and then it, it kind of just snowballed from there. So, you know, really just seeing that the industry was kind of broken. People weren't pitching correctly. People didn't know what they were talking about. Uh, weren't having good follow-ups, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, we've had some of our uh, clients on your, your podcast as well. Yeah. So thank you for that as well. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's just, been, it's just been, uh, I'd say that's probably when I started realizing that, you know, you had something like, you know, there like niche. Yeah. yeah sure. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and definitely full disclosure. I've I've had a few guests from Matthew's company, and um, and his people, the people that works with him, they're always on time. Whenever I send the email out about questions, whatever, boom, uh, they answer it so quickly that I'm like, oh shoot, I just sent this out, <laughs> you know, and and I'm not even affiliated with with Matthew's company, or whatever. So I'm just saying that as as a uh, as a full time podcaster, I'm I'm definitely a fan of. Matthew's company, you know, elite podcast bookings. So, okay. So the general question or the main question is, so how can a podcaster start raising capital for their business, especially if they're in real estate, you know, you're a newbie, you've done a few, maybe one or two deals. If, and I'm talking about myself, I've done a couple of deals, but I invested in real estate stocks, whatever. Willie Morales mm -hmm. wants to raise money, but he feels that he still needs to do more deals or mm -hmm. a, how can I uh, yeah. uh, do a presentation to show who I am and what yeah, I can yeah, do for sure. So, yeah. So, I mean, you're obviously going to want to have, <clears throat> you're going to want to have some, you know, you're going to want to have your branding down, you know, your color scheme picked out. You're going to want to have your logo. You're going to want to have your website. I mean, these are all kind of the general basics, right? right. So let's just say you have uh, XYZ capital already figured out XYZ capital.com, et cetera, et cetera. And you have your branding, you have your messaging, everything's straightened up. And now you're starting to want to raise capital or you're wanting to attract bigger deals. You want to attract yeah. more investors and you want to start telling your family members what you're doing. And so one of the great things about podcasting, right, is it's more uh, being a guest on podcasts. It is more towards the digital realm. So mm -hmm. there's the analog and there's the digital. So the analog would be like the good old boys. Hey, I'm going to go to the conference. I'm going to shake hands, kiss babies. Uh, these things are important, right? In developing relationships, mm -hmm. but it's more, you know, one-on-one -on -one. it's insular. You got to shake hands. You got to take three to five days, three to four days off. You got to drive, you got to go in, you got to kind of put on the front, uh, blah, 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 blah. Right? right. So digital realm, right. Is going to be, let's say podcasting. So for example, let's say you are to go on two podcasts a month and the average average, uh, downloads per episode is 1000, we'll say. So you go on 2000 or sorry, you go on two podcasts. So you have 2000 downloads a month. You go on 24 podcasts a year. You have 24,000 downloads. Now all of a sudden your message that you're trying to send is mm. being promoted out into the world. So if you're going on industry or if you're going on real estate podcasts and you're going on entrepreneur podcasts and going on business podcasts, you're able to target business professionals that are more likely to be investing within your company. Now, like American Express says, you have to have seven different touch points before somebody actually takes action. So as much as I like you, William, this is the first time that I'm meeting you, right? Yeah. But if I were to, you know, to speak with you today, or let's say I was on your show again in six months, and you know we, we talk off air, 
and you know you, i'm in your mailing list and then next thing you know uh you show me another deal like now we've had five touch points already right there mm. right and then maybe six seven maybe a year from now i'm more likely to invest with you so if somebody just goes on one podcast and they think hey i'm going to go out there and you know put my name out there and hey oh why didn't somebody invest with me you know, you go up to your, 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 your rich uncle and you say, Hey, by the way, like, I, I just got this deal under contract and I'm looking to raise like $1 million. It's like, well, great. Like I've never, I didn't even know you were in real estate. It's like, great. Mm. Like keep me updated. And then it's like, Oh, he, he didn't want to give me money. Oh, okay. Well, the next year he sees you. Oh yeah. I got another deal. It's like, Oh, you see it. And then he's like, okay, now, now you're kind of nurturing. You're taking your, you're taking your prospect, your rich uncle, along your journey. So if you're saying, Hey, you know, I was on a podcast last week. I was on a podcast this week. I was on a podcast two months ago, three months ago. Mm. You have some content to show people. You have some, something to put out there, right? Now you become a thought leader in the space and these things kind of snowball and you're able to one, attract more capital, which is what you're wanting. Right. And then now you're able to attract more deal flow because you're, you're, you're cultivating and you're building your network. And it's just one of those things that kind of keeps going over and over. Right. No, I get it. Cause you're branding yourself. You're getting on podcasts. That's where yeah. elite uh, podcast bookings uh, come in and you're telling people, Hey, I did this deal. I did that deal. You get an email list, which is always the important one. Right. Matt is just having mm -hmm. that email list. Uh, cause I, you know, it's funny cause I was the opposite of what you were saying where I prefer to go to, um, uh, to network events, but then I realized what you just said, where I could touch a couple of hundred people in one shot, or maybe a couple of thousand or whatever, um, and and telling my story, like, hey, I started in 2017, you know, I did this deal, that deal, instead of trying to explain to everybody at the meet, I never thought about that that way. That's, and also, if you, if that you makes a lot too. of sense. Yeah, if you, if you think about it too, right, if you, and you kind of do with what do uh what you're most comfortable with right mm -hmm. so we'll say podcasting is more of the digital age and everybody once covid happened everybody has to transition towards you know being more digital so if you're going hand going around you're shaking hands kissing babies kind of thing that thing that thing takes a while right but mm -hmm. now you've realized that you can promote your message with evergreen content when you're sleeping and you can't necessarily fake your digital footprint right if you have a hundred plus podcast episodes like I can't, I can't go, to, I can go, I could Matthew go to a conference and say, Oh, I have a portfolio of 50,000 units. And, uh, you know, I'm from, <laughs> right. I'm from Arkansas, blah, blah, blah. Like you could kind of make some stuff up, make some information up. Right. But if you said to somebody like, Hey, I have a hundred plus units or a hundred, uh, podcast episodes, like you literally just turn around, like Google their name, be like, Oh, wow. Oh, you have a nice website. Oh, you have whatever a thousand followers you have. Whoa. You have this person on your oh wow amazing mm. you cannot fake a digital footprint you could necessarily you could fake your analog your persona in going into a conference right and so you know having a digital footprint is very important like you're saying with the newsletter if you had a newsletter of 120 people or whatever it is a thousand uh family members potential investors you know these these are things that take time to curate right you just didn't wake up and say I'm going to start a newsletter. Wow. I randomly got a thousand people. And if you did, they're probably, they probably weren't nurtured. You probably bought them and they're not very responsive, but that that's an asset you have and you can leverage that. And if you start creating, you know, a good brand and you start promoting the proper message, you're able to, you know, like I said, attract more capital and deal flow, and you're able to become a more successful real estate investor. No, I, I wow, uh, that's this is a lesson that I never even thought about. You know, again, like I told you, I prefer, but now that you, you know, like you said, you 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 went to bigger pockets, you pretty much made yourself a digital footprint on bigger pockets, which for yeah. all of us that know bigger pockets, you know, they're they're probably the I mean, they're a killer machine, you know, with all the podcasts they have, the main show on Thursdays and and millions of of followers that they have. Now I understand. And it's funny because a friend of mine does the same thing. She's, she loves having a digital footprint where I'm like, oh, no, I like to be in person. But I'm old school that way, you know, Matt. But I, yeah. I get what you're saying. So um, so for a newbie investor or, you know, someone that hasn't done a deal, how do they get that digital footprint? And is, would that be by 
A, whether it's uh, investing in real estate stocks, you know, early on to, you know, to get to at least learn what the process works, uh, yeah. having a podcast. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. So, yeah, yeah. I would, I Especially would for like, newbies. Yeah. 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 I would, I would say like your question is uh, very basic in a sense, but it's almost overcomplicated, right? Okay. It's like, it's, you know, when you're like, people are like, how do I, yeah. how do I add value? You know, yeah, you know like, yeah, yeah. How do it's I, always the case. Do, you're right. <laughs> but, 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 but what I'm trying to say is like, you know, you just do, right. It's like, if you were to like, this is an example, you want to, you want to leave a digital footprint, right? So let's say uh, you look at the industry leading podcasts or that you want to be on, or you find a great blog uh, entrepreneur.com or something, right. Yeah. Uh, a real estate blog. And you're like, I want to leave a digital footprint. Let's just say that that was your goal. You could go to each of those blogs and at the bottom, they usually have like a comment section. Right. And you could leave, you could be the first person. And a lot of times on blogs, nobody even really comments on blogs anymore. You could be the person that leaves the most thought provoking thing. Right. And let's say you have your X, Y, Z capital already set up and you're like, okay. And then you just read the blog and you write a thoughtful comment and you say like, well, very interesting. Like you, whatever we're looking at markets in, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, I don't think they're necessarily very good because X, Y, Z, I like Florida better because it's landlord friendly as opposed to blah, 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 blah. And then people see that and they're, like, <laughs> right, right. And then they're like, okay, like it's almost like a little hook. Right. Ooh. And now that somebody's going to go to that podcast or that blog post, they could click on it and it's just, in a sense could be like considered a backlink to your website or, you know, your, your Facebook profile page. And you could repeat that process, you know, 15, 20 times a day, or you could do that on LinkedIn, right? Go on people that you're following for real estate. And now you're starting leaving your little tentacles uh, on other people's posts and you're leaving the most thought provoking posts. And it's basically generating back to you, uh, that would be probably the easiest way to start a digital footprint. And, you know, like you're saying, curating your newsletter. Uh, when you're meeting people at the supermarket or you're meeting people out at events, um, you know, it's all, it's, all, it's all how you position yourself, right? It's all right. basically marketing. And so if you're, if you're, out, of the mar uh, if you're out at the uh, supermarket and somebody says to you, you know, like, hey, what do you do? It's like, oh, I'm in real estate, right? It's like, okay, it's kind of, generic are you yeah are you, <laughs> yeah are you a developer but if somebody's like hey what do you do you're like oh i help people you know attract more capital and 10x their money whoa now all of a sudden somebody's interested now you got the intention wow now okay. you're now now now, that, now they're like oh like i i'm i want to 10x my money like tell me more about it you're like yeah you know i'm a real estate investor i you know i basically take large lumps of some money and invest them and and take percentage of the fee, blah, 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 whatever your pitch wants to be. Yeah. And hey, oh, let me grab your email. Yeah, I'll just put a mailing list. Yeah, great. Let's set up a chat. All right, great. Have a good day. Bye. Now you got another email. Now you got a contact. Now you got a first okay. name. Now you start building your newsletter. Yeah. And it's the people that are constantly developing their, their network who are the most successful capital raisers. So like you and I, or you having this podcast, you realize it's a great thing. It's a great tool to network. You know, having people on your podcast could potentially be investors in your deals, or you could be potentially investors in their deals. Right. And if you have one podcast a week and you have, you know, 12 months in the year, now you're doing 48. Now you have 48 brand new contacts of people that you were not likely to meet before, but now you're all set to meet. And now your network's grown that much better. Now you have a podcast after three years. Now you're pushing, you know, 150 uh, potential new, potential new uh, network, pe people within your network, right? Right, right? So when you're constantly growing your network, that's like what you want, right? It's all, yeah. you don't want to start trying to build your network when you don't have your network. And when you have your network, you can fall back on your network. And the people that are the best networkers are usually the best people that have the most deals, the most juggling, the most balls and how the most going on <laughs> right right yeah no i get it so we're talking about obviously branding being on other people's podcasts digital a, a footprint which is definitely huge linkedin twitter your own website uh you know when uh you can, you can have a newsletter which definitely that works uh if you go into bigger pockets 
or any other uh, uh, top notch website, you can leave a comment because then people will see it. Like, and like you said, LinkedIn, I've done that on occasion where I might put up an article and all of a sudden I might have like 150 people viewing it or whatever. So I'm like, oh, okay. So I, I, I get what you're saying, but you know what it is, Matt? Having someone like you that's been there, that's been in the ditches, that's done the work from A to Z, it just makes a lot more sense than having someone telling me that, you know, oh yeah, you know, maybe you should go on social media. Someone to you that's more of an authority, to me, hits home much harder, if that makes sense. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, and, 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 and when you're talking about that too, about on LinkedIn, you post a thing, right? It's basically like the law of, less, the law of reciprocity, right? So when, yeah. you're, when, you, when you give, people are more likely to you know, give back to you. So let's say you lead with value and you provide a, the article of real estate, whatever, top 10 markets to invest in, right. and somebody likes it. Now, let's say 10 people like it. You know, those 10 people liked your post. Now they're interested in your uh, post. So now you could go to their page, those 10 people mm -hmm. and see what they, what they do. And then you could say to them, Hey, Betty Joe, I saw that you commented on puppies. You have a cute dog. Next person. You can go and comment on one of their posts. And now all of a sudden it's like, they see, oh, you added value. They liked your post. Now you're going back to their page. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's almost like the dopamine effect when you like, you like, I like you, you like me. Now I like your stuff. Now we're kind of starting to build a relationship. It's, it's a very small, but and now you now you have another post two weeks later, they like it again, you like their stuff, they like it back, they follow you, you follow them back. And now you're kind of going back and forth, right? But it's like, if you somebody has a million followers, and you comment on it, and they don't comment back, you're kind of like, oh, oh right. they just said thanks. Like, oh, cool. They said thanks. That's, 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 that. you, you feel appreciated, right? Sure, sure. When, you, when you're in your network, and you're like, hey, Tommy, like, I said, hope to see you today. It's your birthday. Hope you have a great birthday. Right. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, so they remember my birthday. That was kind of thoughtful. They didn't have to get you a present. They didn't have to do anything. But like I said, when you're curating these things, when you're curating your network and you're thinking more of like on a global scale of leaving your digital footprint, uh, these things take time. Right. And right. I know it's almost overwhelming when you're hearing this. And that's why, like, when people are coming on our podcast, right, or when we're getting people on other people's podcasts, it's like, you know, you can start small, you can start one, two a, mo a month and build yourself from there. But if you think you're going to come in and hit a home run, in podcasting, or you think you're going to go to a home run and at the, at the conference and you're going to attract a thousand real estate investors. It's like, you may, but these things take time to build your, build your network, build, build your newsletter, build your brand, build your online presence, attract more deals. Right. I mean, right. you said you started in 2017, you have a vast amount of five years of experience already. You can't fake five years of experience. Those things right. take time. Yeah, no, no, I, I definitely get it. I, I, I thank you for that. Um, we're talking with Matthew Boltzell of Elite Podcast Bookings. So Matt, what's next for Elite Podcast Bookings? What are you guys looking to do in the next three to six months? What's your crystal ball uh, saying or, you know, what, yeah. what the goals are for the company? Yeah, so one of the things that we're trying to be, do is build a different vertical within the business mm -hmm. is kind of like more social media management and creating uh, Mac, oops, sorry, I'm camera turn off that's all right. I, I still hear you there you go <laughs> one second all right there we go sorry there so one of, the, one of the things that we're trying to do is with more macro content we're trying to create micro content so if you have a podcast episode that's a an hour long or 30 minutes long basically we're going to take that break it up into shorter snippets to maybe like 90 seconds of content that way you can repurpose it and put it on linkedin and say hey you know, the, here i am talking about the markets and here i am talking about attracting capital. And here I am talking about building your network, like mm -hmm. whatever you want. So right. basically breaking up my, micro content that way, if you're on one podcast episode, you can have three or four different uh, pieces of content to push out. And so that's like the thing is like, people say like content, 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 but like you, you are the content, right? right. Your story is the content. You, you know, the reason why I want to invest with you is because I like you. Right? right. There's a right. thousand people that are in real estate, but why, 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 why am I giving you my money? Because I like you. I know you, I trust you. And those things are hard to, you know, come by. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and so if I yeah. like, you know, you and trust you, I'm more likely to invest with you. And 
you know. Yeah, and, it, and one thing leads to another. Yeah, um, you know, it, again, it's fascinating for me to hear this stuff because, again, it's you know, I've been such an old school guy by going to these events, but you know, uh, just having a digital footprint definitely makes a difference. Would Would you suggest whether you doing solo shows or or guest interviews? Does it does it matter um, if you do solo shows, maybe a 10 minute solo show talking about uh, markets or your first deal that you did or, you know, how the state of the state of the union market, you know, yeah. uh, does, I would say I would say anything, 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 anything is better than nothing. Right. So, well, right. let's 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 look at it this way. <clears throat> let's say you had uh, let's say you had an interview style show mm -hmm. like you're doing. Right. Yeah. So now all of a sudden. William, let's say we're just going to make this up. You have a network of a thousand people or you have a thousand downloads and mm. yeah, you just, let's just say you have a thousand people within your whole network. Right. Okay. And let's say I have a thousand. So now when this episode comes out, I push it out to my network and you push it out to your network. Right. So now all of a sudden this episode has seen 2000 people as opposed to if you were just doing one podcast or whatever you want to call it a uh, webinar or video Etc. Now all of a sudden, like if you're just doing it by yourself, no, yeah, you did a great job, but only a thousand people are seeing it. Right. So if you're trying to, you know, the fastest way to promote your, your message would to be include other people because they're more likely to promote it as well. So, you know, if you're struggling and you think, oh, do I want to do single or do, or, you know, how do I necessarily start? You just got to kind of start and then you will develop what you feel is best, right? right? Like the example I gave at the grocery store, you're like, oh my yeah. God, that's terrifying. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Hey, you don't have to go talk to random strangers. But if your thing is like, hey, I want to go to shake hands, kiss babies in a conference or at a local real estate meetup, like, okay, that could be your goal. But like, you know, you got to do what you feel is comfortable with and then you'll yeah. develop your own style. And people, people will, you know, preach from the pulpit and say like, hey, you have to enter multifamily or, you know, only, only be wholesaling. And, you know, yeah, some, people that, wholesaling yeah. Works with, yeah, some, some people wholesaling is the best and, you know, you just kind of, kind of start and then you kind of develop your own niche and, and see what works best for you. Yeah, no, I get it. Thank you for that. Uh, and, and before I let you go, just a couple more things. First of all, thank you, Matt, so much yep. for being on the podcast. And um, I already could tell, but w what else keeps you motivated? What, 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 when you get out of bed in the morning, what's that moment that you say, you know what, I love doing this. I love doing that. What keeps you motivated? Mm. Yeah, so, I mean, I would say my family, number one, like I have a two-year-old son. He's actually in his terrible twos right now, but he's <laughs> very sweet. Uh, I'm having a, a, my second child come October, so, uh, which will be a boy. And oh, congrats. congrats. <laughs> yeah, when you, when, yeah, then when you just kind of, you know, you, you have like a rough day or you just see your son and just the innocence and the purity and you just kind of like you know i don't know that's just kind of like what life is about right and yeah. it's like here's somebody that's just so happy with a a crumb and a cookie it's like <laughs> isn't that life is so that. pure and joyful and it's it's great that's how i was so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's 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 just it's just great to be around that and so i'd say you know my family you know my 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 son my future son uh they definitely keep me motivated and uh well-rounded and, and filled with love which is good. no definitely sounds good and you talked about a book early any other books you want to recommend and, and please include the first one that you talked about um first book that i talked oh about shoot you did I've talk heard. about it and i was going to write it down but then we just got into this great conversation that i i i i, yeah. I, I forgot what it was but any anyway any books you would like yeah. to recommend? yeah um let's see uh, books that I like to recommend. I mean, I would like, I would recommend the, one of my favorite books is, uh, called the alchemist by yeah, Paulo Coelho. Um, you know, it talks about adventure journeys, philosophy. Yeah. Um, Great and book. for anybody that's kind of on a journey and doesn't necessarily know their path, like Steve Jobs says, like you can't connect the doc, the, connect the dots moving forward. You can only connect the dots looking back. Right. And mm. so you might not necessarily know where you're going, but if you have conviction and you believe in your message, you know, like my mom says, like you're shaking the tree, something's going to fall out. Right. But you don't know what's going to fall out. So yeah. keep on trying, keep pursuing your journey. And, you know, it's a, it's a long road, but it's well worth it.
Yeah, it's a great book. Okay, so we, we're going to go with The Alchemist? Yeah. All one. right, sounds good. And so any advice for new investors that, that they could use? Any advice for them? Uh, they're starting yeah. out their journey, they want to raise capital, or they want to partner mm -hmm. with someone. Uh, yeah. Any uh, I, I would, life I would, lessons? I would say, I would, I would say I'd say, so if, if you're a brand new investor or you're brand new at anything, right, and you're trying to seek mentorship or you're trying to see the next level, I would say reach out to somebody and you're going to want to lead with value. And if you're going to want to lead with value, basically, you're going to want to basically help promote them, their business, you know, with, with something. Nice. And don't go for an ask right away. So if you wanted to share every single piece of their content on your feed for the next two months on real estate that they post, you know, people are going to start to see that. And if you want to create a banner for their marketing strategy, or you want to help them grow their email list, or you want to help them underwrite deals, you know, now you're starting to lead with value and don't go in for the ask right away. So you could say, Hey, I'm brand new to real estate. You know, I, know this market of den sub market of denver it's really hot right now homes are going for sale you can go around you can curate makeup data right i've i've seen 20 flyers in the past month and the average home has been on the market for under three days like right. this is really something really interesting you i'm presenting you with this material because you're a real estate agent and i think you can make a lot of money off it and leave it at that right. and then you can provide them with something else a month later and then now you say hey you know or do you have any positions open at your company, et cetera? And now they're like, oh, like this guy's had a lot of value. Now they're more likely to be more, be more likely to reciprocate that message. So just yeah. lead with value and the world will be a better place and you'll be better off. Yeah, no, I definitely, I definitely got that down. Lead with value. And if somebody want to get in contact with you, what's the best way? Yeah. So if they want to get in contact with me or my company, they can go to elitepodcastbookings.com. They can schedule a call. And if they wanted to go further and possibly use our service, they can enter the promo code William and we will give them 20% off for the first two listeners uh, that mentioned this promo code. No, sounds good. Thank you for that. I'll definitely add that to the show notes. And Matt, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, William. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, everyone, that was Matthew Boltzell and you can find him at Elite podcastbookings.com that's elite podcastbookings.com matthew thank you so much for being on peer-to-peer -peer real estate show really appreciate it you can find me at peer to -peer real estate.com that's peer to number two peer real estate.com check out our past shows and check out our blog when you get a chance please go to apple Podcasts. please subscribe leave a review tell us how we can make this show better and before I go, guys, there's a couple more things. Do not give up on your dreams. Fight for it. Guard it. Protect it. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. And I really believe if you keep the momentum going, good things will happen. On behalf of Peter P. Real Estate Show, I'm William Morales. Until next time, thanks, everybody. Have a great day, and please stay safe. Bye.